If you're not already aware, I'm Alex recently got accused of abuse. These allegations came from his ex-girlfriend Alice, who compiled a Google Drive full of clips, audio, messages, screenshots, and 82 pages worth of messages. Now, now, when it's f***ing late, you admit that you did everything wrong. But when it actually matters, when you should lay down like a good f***ing dog, you don't f***ing do it, you fight for some reason. I don't know why you fight, because you're losing, because you end up admitting that you f***ing up anyway, so it's just weird and i know that you're going to end up admitting that you fucked it all. if you want to know more about these allegations please feel free to go back to my previous video where i go through this google drive in full however since i dropped that initial video stuff in the i'm alex situation has progressed significantly with ex friends of i'm alex and ex employees actually speaking out against i'm alex including another person claiming to be a victim of him we'll just start with alex's ex friends and ex collaborators making statements against him because it feels right to start there hi I'm going to abuse you, domestically, like Chris Brown the rat. I want to start off with the individual who has spoken out the most against I'm Alex, which is Ian Abbott. Ian Abbott has spoken a lot since Alice dropped her Google Drive, stating that he had no idea what was going on. His initial Instagram stories were just acknowledging what Alice had put out there and clearing up that he had no idea of what Alex was actually genuinely doing to Alice. After his initial statements, I never followed up with a few more Instagram stories where he cleared up and doubled down on saying that he had no idea what was going on and that he only heard a few rumours floating about. I think what makes me feel truly guilty is I genuinely really thought those two were really happy together until me and my friends saw signs they kept falling out via unfollowed and TikTok repos. I never has put a lot of effort into creating a timeline to show that he and other people that know him didn't have any idea of what Alex was doing. I think this is due to the fact that a lot of people online expected Iron Abba and other people to actually do something in this situation, like go up to Alex and punch him in the face. The next one I want to speak about I feel like is really important for the rest of the ones we're going to follow up, and that is Will and E's ex-girlfriend Mia. RE I'm Alex. This is something I've been aware of since May last year, and it's something in my opinion is well known throughout the industry. I can't speak for people who aren't in our group or who I don't see regularly, but the openness at which this was discussed amongst people last year, I generally really find it hard to believe that the creators close to Alex had no idea what was going on. When I found out Alex and I were signed to the same talent agency, I immediately made them aware of the accusations and put pressure on them to drop him, which they did. This was June 2023. From the documents in the drive, it looks like the things escalated even further from what I was aware of. Emotional abuse, threats of violence, use of racial slurs, which is so heartbreaking. From Mia's statement, she's telling us that this was an open secret and that the majority of people around Alex should have really known what was going on because of how open it actually was. I mean, she even states that she got Alex dropped from his talent agency. This does paint the picture that people knew about it to some extent and were covering for Alex. I mean, after this, Will and e even came up with a statement of his own backing up what Mia had said and even stating that he, due to the rumours spreading last year, had stopped being friends with Alex. Mia and Will and E's statements really made Mimulus's statements a lot more interesting. His original one was showing support to Alex and his one on Monday was just making sure that people know he had no idea what Alex was actually doing and that he hadn't really seen I'm it. not saying that any of these people knew or how much they knew, but just from their over-specification and the fact they had no idea or they only heard rumours, it really does put into question their motives and what they actually knew. Other creators who knew Alex, like Jay Swingler, Italian Batch, and many more have put out statements going against Alex and people that knew Alex who didn't speak out. Creators who knew about the whole Alex situation before it became public, only now speaking on it is prime example of creators being opportunists. Creators are excited about drama, they completely forget it's a human being that's suffering. Where the F, the concern and genuine support for the girl? God, I hate influencers sometimes. Aside from people making statements, there's also some other allegations that have come out against Alex. The first one we're going to tackle is from Charlie. Now, Charlie helped with I'm Alex's anti-social podcast, friends with the sidemen, and is all round a sound guy. No, I did E-Boy's production, and then I did one internet sensation content. Then he went cold on me entirely, I had no idea why. My old flatmates came back from the Chelsea Champions League final and told me that he was telling people that I had sexually assaulted him, which is a lie. Numerous other people People in the scene came to me with this information. I called my mum in a panic as mud sticks and having an allegation like that is one, legally horrifying, two, morally condemning. My mum advised me to either address it, head on, or wait. This was three years ago. At the time of recording, there was no receipts or evidence for these claims. However, these are the type of claims that realistically there are just going to be no evidence for as it seems like a one-time thing and realistically you just don't have evidence for. However, if we take it at face value, I'm not shocked. I am Alex was the main one who falsely accused Slazo, 
so it's not surprising he would force DQ somebody else. And speaking of Slazo, the next allegations coming out is from actually somebody who helped falsely accuse Slazo. My experience with I'm Alex, though we never confirmed it to the public because I personally like keeping my relationships private, I dated Alex from June 2017 till March 2018. It's the most toxic relationship I've ever been in, and I was lucky to get out when I did. When we were dating, though he was from in England and I lived in America, we were pretty much never apart for longer than a week. He stayed in Europe for a couple of months, then went to America for six months. He couldn't stay six months straight due to visa implications. So he stayed three months, flew back to England for a few days, then came back to America for another three months. After this six months was over and he couldn't come to America again for a while due to visa requirements, we spent some time away from each other. And during that time, with help from my friends, I came to the realization that I was in the worst and most toxic relationship I'd ever been in, and I had to get out. It started out great, as they always do, the honeymoon phase as they call it. But as time went on, things just got worse and worse. I was fortunate to get out when I did, but reading all the new information that's come out, he's clearly gotten worse. During the relationship, he made me feel insane, like I wasn't myself anymore. He never felt like he listened to me, I always felt belittled or inferior. Whenever we recorded videos together, he would constantly talk over me and never let me have my moment. Most of the time when I had problems, he always somehow made it about himself or talked about his own issues. He would get stressed over his YouTube channel constantly and complain about uploading, as it was the hardest job on the planet and no one harder had it than him. His classic line was, I can't catch a fucking break. If we ever had a disagreement, he would also sometimes allude to the possibility of ending himself over minor conflicts as a threat, so I couldn't continue with the conversation. It was nearly possible to give him any kind of criticism because it was like adding to the pile of minor issues that he had already blown fire out of proportion in his head. The rest of this statement paints the picture that I am Alex was manipulative, but then it switches to the Slazo situation, where this person puts heavy emphasis on Slazo and the fact that I am Alex quote unquote made them say the stuff they did about Slazo. King and his posts are still up where they blatantly falsely accuse Slazo. It just reads more like they're pushing the blame onto I am Alex whilst he's in his weakest spot he's ever been in. I'm not discrediting this, I have no idea if this is true, but this is coming from somebody who has lied significantly and also falsely accused people. I can't take this at face value, especially with the fact that there is no evidence attached. Now the last thing I actually want to speak about is something that came out against Alice. So I was pulling apart the dock that got dropped on I'm Alex and noticed that a few of the screenshots had been cropped. Interestingly, they were cropped within the dock itself, so Google preserved the rest of the image data, which I was able to extract. Here they are uncropped. Now these screenshots are almost exactly the same, apart from Alex's name. The name is Racist N-Word. Of course people brought it up due to Alex's use of the N-Word in the Google Drive. Alice wrote in response to this, I write in my statement multiple times that I became reckless with my use of language because this was so normalized by Alex. And while aware this doesn't excuse my use of the word, but it is an honest explanation. I apologize for any offense this caused. Now I do think it's a bit weird that Alice hid this and cropped it so nobody could see, and I don't know why Alice wouldn't just openly admit this in the Google Drive, but in the grand scheme of things in comparison to what Alex has done, this really isn't too much. It isn't right by any means, but some people are going way too far with what they're saying against Alex over this. But that is the majority of everything that's been going on with the I'm Alex situation. I really won't probably make a video on the I'm Alex stuff until he responds, if he does, unless something really major happens over the next couple of days. Please stay tuned for a follow-up video if that does happen.